Eight men rode into canyons. I dug seven graves. The men you seek think you are dead? Better to stay that way. You want me to wear a mask? Justice is what a man must take for himself. So I got a chance to see the Lone Ranger this 4th of July weekend. Nice good old-fashioned American icon on the, you know, good old-fashioned American holiday. Seems rather fitting. A pity it wasn't a better movie. This was not terrible, not terrible by any means, but had a lot of problems. Uh, one problem being it is too damn long. This movie clocks in at just under two and a half hours. And you know what? The last 30 minutes are really good. It's basically just this elaborate train chase with Tonto and the Lone Ranger going after the bad guys. And it's a lot of fun. It's got the William Tell Overture playing through the whole thing. Classic Lone Ranger stuff. And, you know, but very well shot, pretty good effects. It's just very, very fun to watch. And if the rest of the movie was like that, it probably could have redeemed it. Unfortunately, that's really the best part of the movie, and it takes two hours to get to it. Um, and in those two hours, here's basically what happens. Uh, John Reed, played by... Um, Army Hammer, just blanked on his name for a second there, is... Uh, a district attorney who is overseeing the transfer of Butch Cavendish, played by William Fickner, to some town in Texas where he is scheduled to be executed for his crimes by hanging. Um, and Tonto is also a prisoner on this train because, um, reasons. If they did mention why, I missed it, but this movie has so many plot holes, it's probably likely they'd never mentioned it at all, and he's just there because he's there. But anyway, um, it all goes horribly wrong because the Cavendish gang attacks the train and frees their boss, and they ride off. And so uh, John and his brother Dan, who is the, uh, the local sheriff in town, I believe, uh, they form a posse and they go after him. Unfortunately, they are ambushed and everyone is killed except for John, who is uh, wounded pretty badly, but he's not quite dead. He's getting better. And he's discovered by Tonto and nursed back to health. And uh, not just by Tonto, but by this rather strange horse that he finds wandering in the desert, which becomes the Lone Ranger's horse, Silver. And... Once he is good to go again, he vows revenge on Butch Cavendish for killing his brother. And the rest of the movie is them going after Butch Cavendish and his gang. You wouldn't think it would take two hours to do that, but they found a way. Um, and it takes two hours for a number of reasons. The first reason being, this is really not a Lone Ranger movie, it's a Tonto movie. Um, if you saw any of the trailers and the advertisements, it's always Johnny Depp that gets top billing and not Army Hammer. And when the Lone Ranger has second billing in his own movie, you know something is wrong. And yeah, it's all focused on, you know, Tonto and his quirky, bizarre behavior, his weird face paint, the dead bird that he carries on his head. This movie is weird. Um, and his, you know, quirky, bizarre behavior and... Uh, silly little one-liners and sight gags and all that. Um, and, hell, we pretty much learn Tonto's entire life story throughout this movie and really don't learn much about uh, about John Reed's character, not much about the Lone Ranger. We see kind of how he becomes the Lone Ranger. That story isn't told very well, but we do see it. But we know jack shit about where he came from. <laughs> and... It's easy to see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to make Tonto another Jack Sparrow. This is a mistake, because you can't make another Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow was such a strong character, you can't capture that magic again. And besides, if you're going to make another Jack Sparrow movie, just make another Pirates of the Caribbean. Which I've heard they're doing anyway, so what was the point of this? Ugh. But yeah, so that was their first mistake. Their second mistake is... It takes these two characters way too goddamn long to do anything. Their journey to finding Bush Cavendish 
goes through so many twists and turns and side locations, complete with pointless side characters. Um, one, as a matter of fact, the one of the first places they go is this brothel, um, which is run by Helena Bonham Carter, who does absolutely nothing in this movie except this one moment near the end where she fires a gun. That's all her character amounts to, and if you took her out of the movie, it wouldn't change much. Anyone can fire a gun. That's not a special talent, okay? Um, but yeah, her... And her character was quite bizarre as well. She had a prosthetic leg made out of ivory, which doubled as a shotgun. This movie is weird. Uh, but yeah, and they keep running into random shit like this, and every time they do have a chance to kill the bad guy, they don't because the Lone Ranger keeps screwing it up. Even at the very beginning of the movie, um... Part of the reason Tonto was on there is apparently he got himself arrested so he could get close to Butch Cavendish because Cavendish did something bad to Tonto in his past and so he wants revenge and he's not able to kill him because John Reed fucks it up. And that's basically the story of the entire movie. They can't kill him because John Reed fucks it up. And it's all because he is adamant about not killing anyone. He wants Cavendish to be brought to justice. He has to be brought to justice because justice is what keeps the society together. Justice is important. Justice, justice, just. He must have said justice about 500 times in this movie, I swear. And it's, I, I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to create a character with a very strong moral fiber who is opposed to killing unless it's absolutely necessary but they went about it completely the wrong way because it just makes him look like a total pussy. You know, he's that when the, he and his brother are form the posse and are riding into town, to, or not into town, out of town, into the desert to go after Butch and his gang, his brother hands him a gun and says, here, you're going to need this because we're going after a ruthless murderer and he will not hesitate to kill you. He's like, no, 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 I don't use guns. Like, no, seriously, you'll need this to defend yourself. He killed before, he'll do it again. Like, no, no. I, I don't use guns. I don't believe in guns. Why did I bring you along? Reasons. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah, and... Yeah, I get what they were trying to do, but they just made him look like a total pussy. And an incompetent pussy at that. And there are ways to do that type of character without going that route. Batman, perfect example. Batman does not kill. I don't care what Tim Burton says. And yet, you would never call Batman a pussy, because he's clearly not. It is possible to do this character without making him look like a pussy. They did not do that in this movie, which makes it really hard to cheer for the Lone Ranger, because he's not acting like the Lone Ranger. He's acting like some guy that is desperately trying to be the Lone Ranger who shouldn't. Uh, until the last 30 minutes of the movie, when he finally does nut up. Oh, and there's also a lot of weird plot holes in this movie, like... Um, after, you know, Cavendish escapes, they still, uh, take Tonto and put him in jail because he was imprisoned on that train for a reason, so, you know, he's gotta be put to jail because justice and all that. But then it's Tonto who finds it, John Reed in the desert after he and his party are ambushed, and they never do explain how he got out of jail. In fact, you know, most of this story is told in flashback format. It actually starts out like around 1920s in San Francisco where an elderly version of Tonto is, has apparently acquired a job as a diorama statue at a historical exhibition in a carnival. And no, I'm not going to try to explain that because there's no way to have it make sense. This movie is weird. And... Basically, he starts talking to this kid who finds out he's Tonto, and so he asks him to tell the story of the Lone Ranger, and when he gets to that part of the story, the kid's like, wait a minute, how did you get out of jail? And Tonto's just like, uh, um... So anyway, I found Kimosabi there in the desert. And he just keeps on going with the story. It's almost like this movie is aware that it has plot holes, but not only does it not care, it almost wears them as a badge of honor. This movie is weird. 
uh, I mean, at least they admit they have plot holes. That's something to be said for that, I guess. But, oh, and there was another really weird moment in this movie. Um, there's a point where the ranger and Tonto are out in the desert, um, and they're, you know, cooking a rotisserie rabbit over a campfire. And a bunch of jackrabbits approach them from the desert, kind of keeping their distance, but just watching them. And Tonto looks over at them, cuts a piece of meat off the rabbit, and tosses it at them. And then they sprout these huge fucking vampire fangs and devour this meat while snarling and growling the whole time. And then they run off. So, yeah, carnivorous rat Not just carnivorous, cannibalistic rabbits. Have I mentioned this movie is weird? I, I don't know if that was supposed to be a Monty Python reference. Nasty, big, pointy teeth. I don't know. That... I don't know. what Just what in the fuck? Ugh. Um... What else can I say about this movie? Um... I can't really complain about the acting because the characters are just, you know, playing the roles the way they're meant to be played. You know, it's not Army Hammer's fault that his character was a pussy. That's, he's just playing the character the way that they wanted him to play it. Uh, Johnny Depp does a fine job. Um, William Fickner as Butch Cavendish is really good. He, he was awesome in this movie. And in fact, this movie actually gets really, really dark in places. And pretty violently graphic as well. They, they are really just kind of teetering on the edge of the PG-13 rating. I don't know how they pulled that off. Um, when they're waiting for Butch Cavendish to arrive by train for his hanging, which is another reason I didn't get for why they didn't want to kill him. He's, he's already been tried and convicted and sentenced to death. Who gives a shit if he dies by the bullet or by the hangman's noose? He's going to die anyway. It doesn't matter. Just, but anyway, while they're waiting for his train to arrive, the, someone's like, I heard he once ate a man's heart right out of his chest. Yeah, well, I heard he ate his eyes. Well, I heard he once ate part of his own foot just to win a bet. And, of course, you're thinking, well, obviously none of this is true. This is all just, you know, elaborate legends to make the character look scarier than he really is. Sort of thing happens all the time. No, no. You actually see him eat a dude's heart. But, well, okay, you you see him, but you don't see him, if that makes sense. You, you see him, you know, lift up the knife and plunge it into the guy's chest, but then all you... Then it just cuts to some other guys, and you just kind of hear the sound effects. And then after he's done, he just kind of lifts up his hand and, you know, motions to one of his minions, and then he hands him a napkin, he just kind of wipes his mouth off. You're like, holy crap, he just ate his heart. I did not expect to see that in this movie. Yeah, this... This movie is weird. That's the best summary I can give. This movie is fucking weird. Ugh. So yeah, not much more to say about it, really. It was... You know, could have been better, but... Not terrible, I suppose. And yeah, the only recommendation I can give is rent the DVD when it comes out, watch the last half hour. Not missing anything. That's about it. Take care. If these men represent the law, I'd rather be an outlaw. He's coming for you.